looking to set records on speed tonight. Are we? What's on time? Well, we, it's skinny agenda and all that. Okay, sounds good. That's all I'm branded. <laughs> okay. Good evening, Littleton, and welcome to the select board meeting for August 23rd, 2021. Um, if we could open our session with the clerk leading us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Matthew. All right, we do have a relatively light agenda tonight, so I'm under some pressure to break some records here tonight. <laughs> uh, the agenda is as follows. We've already done the pledge. We'll do a reading of the mail, which will be done by Mr. Ansaldi. Uh, 6.35, we'll get into uh, informational presentation, which is going to be done by our newest legal... Uh, legal. <laughs> it is legal, but Eagle Scout candidate, uh, Brandon Lavoie. And uh, 645, Department of Board updates and requests. We've got a few. Littleton Community Television is going to talk to us about our contract with Comcast. Elder and Human Services has an acceptance of donations again. Uh, Department of Public Works has a contract for us to approve, and the Fire Department has a presentation relative to a new ambulance. Uh, at 7.05 or thereabouts, we'll have public input and opportunity for anybody in the, in the audience that wants to be heard um, to do so through the chair and just kind of follow our, our, uh, our format or just be recognized through the chair. Please raise your hand, be recognized, identify yourself, your name and address, and then come to the podium once you're, you are recognized by the chair. Uh, and then we'll have member updates, 7.15-ish. We will have a fiscal, fiscal year 2023 draft budget agenda, draft budget calendar. Um, that is going to be the first calendar we'll be going through with our new Director of Finance and Budget, Alicia Nunley Benjamin. At 725, special town meeting update on insertion of articles and uh, some information on the personnel bylaw amendment. 735, town administrator, assistant town administrator update, a uh, number of different updates from them. And then we will do approval of minutes and adjourn sometime around 8 o'clock. That's the over under. <laughs> so, Mr. Ansaldi, if you could take away the mail from us. Sure. Just a couple of items, uh, Mr. Chair. The first one is just to inform the public that thir Thursday was postponed last week to this Thursday, August 26th, at Fay Park. And the other is a, just a reminder for September 17th. This is from EHS. Uh, then on Friday, September 17th at 7 p.m. at Fay Park, they'll be uh, having the um, uh, presentation of Beautiful Boy. Um, they say bring a blanket and a chair and enjoy the, uh, enjoy the movie. Sponsored by the Littleton Coalition? Yes. Edition? Correct. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you very much. So next up, we do have a, uh, a presentation, which we're excited to uh, have before us. So Brandon, if uh, you'd like to come to the microphone, introduce yourself, and uh, give us an update. Fancy podium, you meet uh, this special? Well, Absolutely. Is this thing on? It's on. It is. Right. Would, you, um, would you like to mask up, mask down? Do you have a preference? Whatever or? you're comfortable with. Yeah. Right. So my name is... Brandon Lavoy. I am a Life Scout in Troop 20 Littleton and our latest Eagle Scout candidate. A few months, a few months back, I came in front of the board with a proposal for a project on Forest. I am pleased to be here today to give you an update on the status of the Town Forest Trail. So I um, in the agenda is a copy of the original proposal for the project, just if anyone needs to to, re to read up on it. It's the same information that I've sent before, but just to brief overview of key, key details. Um, my, the outcome was to be a walking trail in the Littleton Sound Forest area. The project bounds set with Miss Green, Mr. Finley, and Mr. O'Neill, where it'd be around four to six feet in width, just a good walking trail. And the length was just from point A to point B, which was the edge of Harwood Avenue to uh, what's the newly Durkee Farm Estates, the edge of, which I believe was Douglas Road. And the task was to just basically blaze the initial trail so that you could walk from end to end. 
Uh, next slide, please. So here are some uh, before pictures, as you can see on the on the right, just how the undergrowth really came in, and on the left is just that, as I believe. Sorry, Brandon. Oh, no worries. <laughs> Uh, it's right. on, on the left is for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> on the left is a little bit of what it was like um, after we had trampled it a little bit, and as you can see, it's you really can't tell which direction it goes next. Um, now, <laughs> next one. Sorry. Um, and here's some after, which with a little bit of a, a little bit of fun. Me in the middle. That's fun. Uh, this is two of the, some of the best examples of where it is. On the left, we call it the four corners. It, it marks about a little bit to the trail end by Durkee and that's what we call the top side. Um, as you could see, we, we as in me and my fellow scouts, my parents, my scouting parents, a lot the scout leaders and many other volunteers, youth and adult, um, cleared a nice walking path that looks like it's already been trampled. We did a really nice job of clearing it and getting it down to, you know, passable, walkable. Great. Um, if you go to the next slide, this one more picture just to, um, that's another part, section of the trail to, uh, to finish off. This was, um, when a few days, you know, like a few weekends ago, was it? My, um, my, my father, my, my nine-year-old sister, my dog all made it from point A to point B and even passed Mr. O'Neill on it. And I like to say, you know, we, we would have all gotten lost if, if it wasn't clear enough. So, you know, <laughs> um, so that was before overview. If any questions before I, I, um, statement of basically we get for approval looking for a signature like okay, a you signed off to approve it and I am no you're asking for sign off to prove it being done awesome. Any comments questions yeah if I may um, uh, I have seen a large number of Eagle Scout projects come through troop 20 I think some of them have been less um, complete and ambitious than yours I'm very happy to see this one I thought you did an excellent job organizing I was one of the volunteers on it um, and uh, overall, I, I, I also have to say I've just been very impressed with your, uh, your progress as a scout through the years. And um, this is like the, the perfect capper to a scouting career. And um, congratulations. I really think you, uh, you did it. Many, many you, thank yous. You and did a great job. Uh, thank, thank you for your kind words and for your effort as well. <laughs> Mr. 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 Nordhaus, your, your very own Mr. Nordhaus was a huge help on the project and, and many efforts. So. Any time that I can run a chainsaw, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Safely, of course. All, of all course. Safety. Absolutely. All the safety precautions being used. Mr. Knox, do you have any comments, questions? No, I'm just, just impressed by the whole thing. Same? Yeah, that's great. I, curious, uh, given the weather over the past couple of months, how you were able to <laughs> Was it during the downpours or during the heat waves that you were able to get people out there or <laughs> both? Well, I, actually, apparently the first workday I had scheduled was the Saturday, I believe it was the first, second Saturday in July, and it was forecasted to rain, but obviously I was running um, at the very end of August. I believe it was August 1st, I headed off to scout summer camp for my last year, and I gave myself a mental deadline of bulk of the work, and it, and it was raining. It, yeah. I told people I, I canceled the hard date of please come help and say, if you can come join me and I think that was the day I had my biggest workforce oh, that's really and we yeah. plowed through about half the trail in a day oh, that's awesome. uh, well. while it was raining <laughs> all right and the other point I just had uh, is that you may or may not be aware but since you began this project uh, the town has acquired 20 acres 20 plus acres across the street which if you do a real good job here you're going to be expected to continue <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. yeah we're gonna we're gonna amend the motion so it includes that other parcel <laughs> It's like a golden palm, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Can it count as a first job too? My parent, my parents are gonna. <laughs> if I don't get a job soon, I'm gonna. <laughs> you have to talk to the uh, to Alicia. The budget uh, may not include it. It's a couple items away. <laughs> no, this is great. Um, it, it's to Matthew's point. There's a lot that goes into it, other than the actual execution and getting out there and, and doing the work. There's so much planning, and you have to, you know, you really have to do project management and, and uh, communication. And, it's a testament to, to you and to you know, your experience. So thank you very much for taking an asset that we already have and making it even better and more usable for us. So absolutely, I think we're ready for the motion and All right. gladly accept it. I move that the select board vote to authorize the town administrator to sign off project approval statement for Eagle Scout candidate, candidate Brandon Lavoy. Thank you. Moved, seconded by Mr. Glavy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous, Brandon.
congratulations. Thank, really Thank happened. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a lot of luck. <laughs> <laughs> you can swing that by anytime. And I'll sign that. Thanks, Brandon. Excellent. All right. Love when we're able to do those. Good stuff. Great project. All right, time. next up, we're two minutes ahead, Paul. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Department board updates and requests. LCTV, Comcast Renewal Contract Update. Great. Please do. Uh, Actually, come right up to the, the microphone. Great. Yeah. Oh. Thanks. Hi. Uh, my name is Bill Vales. I'm the chairman of uh, LCTV. And uh, our task was to uh, negotiate a contract with Comcast um, for the next 10 years. And we started that, it seems like, um, eons ago. I think it was the better part of uh, eight months. And we have a agreement now. It's been transmitted to uh, Anthony to turn over to the board with the recommendation of um, the uh, LCTV Advisory Committee uh, that the board uh, accepts, accepts that agreement and signs it. We feel that it's a good agreement. It's a 10-year agreement. It um, uh, maintains the 5% gross annual revenues uh, across 10 years which is consistent, or, or I should say the same, with uh, what the previous contract was. It provides for $150,000 across 10 years of uh, capital funding. Um, and it also provides for uh, the acquisition at Comcast expense, um, including the installation and the maintenance of some uh, SD, SDI uh, equipment for encoding to replace old modulators that we have in there. And we uh, got that at their expense. So we think it's a good deal. I'll say- in, Any in, questions? Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, in, in light of the number of people that are cutting the cords and everybody's doing Hulu and Netflix and Wi-Fi, you know, the, the streaming and, and, and all the different services that are out there today. So the Comcast and, and their competitors are scrambling to try to find ways to make sure that they maintain the revenue. They're trying to do it not so much on the backs of the, their users, and, mm -hmm. and some would argue otherwise, but um, the fact that you guys were able to kind of maintain the $150,000 over 10 years, it sounds similar to what we had in the last contract. Actually, that was quite an increase. We mm -hmm. had $50,000 yeah. over the last contract, which was $150,000. Dollars over 10 years, I call to your intention uh, to your attention just how much LCTV has grown in terms of the product that it's produced in 10 years uh, and and the various mediums that we've uh, uh, moving our content to. So we're absolutely fortunate to have the the team that we have in place, yeah. the, the advisory committee, um, and, and certainly you guys went to bat on on behalf of the town, and it's yeah. very much appreciated. I don't know if anybody else has any comments or. Uh, a couple of points. Thank you, Bill, and your, your team. It's a long process. I'm trying to think of, you know, boy, it was years ago, years ago now when you and the attorney Epstein was in here with you when you were... It wasn't me. It was probably... Yeah, Alan it was Alan McRae, McRae I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your, your group. Uh, but at the time, a couple of... Um, there, there was a lot of angst, angst over what might happen at the federal level in terms of... Uh, change in FCC policy towards yep. uh, the, the whole nature of these things. Do you, do you have any kind of update on that or, or insight? Uh, I, I don't in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the particular policy things you're talking about. I think at that time, uh, net neutrality was right. probably the big thing. I don't know where that's at now. I have my, my own opinions from a computer science background, right. which I'm not going to go into at this point. Uh, it just seems it was on the surface a couple of years ago, as I, you know, and then it's kind of fallen behind other issues, at least in the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the other point, and this is just kind of clarification, the, the Verizon piece that we, we did that, what was that, a, a year or so well, ago? Well, Verizon, uh, this was so much fun that now we have Verizon to deal with. Oh, so this And still, that needs to be yeah. done by December 
third week of September, uh, December. I forget what that is. I was so. just trying to have a happy memory that we had already completed that, but that's not <laughs> that's not done yet. Is it likely to be any uh, significantly different than the Comcast? Or I certainly hope it's significantly different in the um, expedience that it's yeah. done. You know, from <laughs> the uh, vendor's side. Great. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I think um, if I may, I, I yeah, have a couple, please. just a couple clarifying questions. Sure. So it, it, it <clears throat> seems from reading this that they're removing high def PEG channels. Is that accurate? Because the modulators are just standard def now. No, we did we we did not request uh, high definition mm -hmm. uh, uh, channels. We're we're good with uh, standard definition, so that's what we wanted to maintain. They were not offering three high definition channels, which was which was a little bit of a rub because then you have to decide which channels are you going to use the high def on right, and which okay. ones aren't. So at this point, uh, and you also need your subscribers then to pay more money to get high, uh, high definition. So at this point, you know, <coughs> yeah. we just, it just wasn't a big item. So we used it as a bargaining chip to get other stuff. And, and then you, you mentioned the 150,000. So yeah. is that separate from the 5%? Yes, it is. And the 150 is basically like a pass-through for the payment for the modulators? Is that no, correct? No, no that has oh, yeah. nothing to do with oh, the modulators. Okay. That's why I enumerated those items separately. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, the $150,000 is um, uh, capital, um, a capital contribution. Oh, great. Okay, excellent. And then yeah. my last one is I noticed that the uh, monthly service for public buildings was removed from the contract. The f it's in 5.6. There's free drops in monthly service, but the monthly service was gone. Yeah. Are we just not using it? Or? Yeah. You know, uh, I asked that question uh, only three times and didn't get an answer for it. Uh, so I, I really can't answer that. But I did uh, call that out in some of my comments. Mm. Uh, you know, that, that apparently, as I recall the contract, they, uh, the lines were installed for free. Right. But the service is not provided, and that's the difference, I, I think. So I, the short of that is I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm wondering if the school uses it or, you know, the library, no? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, I mean, they, I know they use the cable app. They, they use the cable Internet, but they, um, they don't use the programming, I guess is what I'm asking. Police and fire, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are still going to be using Comcast you know, as the lowest transport on the stack, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, whether or not they use the programming. Okay. Knows, very know, good. Thank you very much. Yeah. All okay. right. It all sounds great. Hopefully uh, the next negotiation does go more quickly. I think there were some changes with their government affairs so. liaison and that kind of thing. So this was really um, challenging. came down to the wire. Yeah. Right, yeah. Anthony? Yeah. And, and and Bill really did a tremendous amount of work. He's been on top of this. He was amazing, Bill. You did, you did a great job. Yeah, I know it was difficult, especially Comcast wasn't the easiest to deal with as far as getting information from them, but Bill certainly kept on top of them. Great. So, uh, And to get it done under the wire because our contract expires uh, the Wednesday. The when the alarm clock yeah, rings. That's it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> you better get your pen done. Yeah. So it was a great job I built to yeah. get it to this point. Thank you. you had until midnight tomorrow, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Thanks, I Matthew. move that the select board vote to approve the cable television renewal license with Comcast of Massachusetts 3, Inc., dated August 18th, 2021, to run from August 25th, 2021 through August 24th, 2031. Second. It's moved, second by Ms. Napoli. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, it's unanimous. Thank Bill, you. thank you very much and good luck. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, we have an, an acceptance of gifts. Are you taking care of this? One of you guys taking care of this? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, this is another opportunity for us to sing the praises of uh, Ed. Mr. Ed Howard down at Ed's Weenies. Are you taking the lead, Joe? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, once again, uh, the Elder and Human Services Department uh, received a donation from Ed's uh, Weenies uh, this time in the amount of uh, $563 uh, for families in need. Uh, the second uh, donation uh, that's received by the department is in-kind services from the Friends of the Littleton Council on Aging. Uh, for in-kind uh, donation valued at $50. Um, and that was uh, for a recent uh, COA event that was held. 
That's awesome. Just keeps giving. Go ahead. It's our golden goose. All right. <laughs> All right. Are, are we ready? I think we are. I move that the select board vote in accordance with its policy on solicitation and acceptance of monetary and non-monetary gifts for public purpose to approve donations to the Department of Elder and Human Services, EHS, from Ed's Weenies in the amount of $563 for families in need and the Friends of the COA for an in-kind donation valued at, at the amount of $50. Second. Motion's been made, seconded by Mr. Knox. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank you once again, Ed. Trying to keep us moving. Thanks, Chris. Next up is the uh, Department of Public Works. Got <laughs> <laughs> the memo. Uh, oh, oh, boy. oh, that's oh, coming out of your budget. Uh, need fifty dollars worth of in-kind donations from Ed to fix the mic. <laughs> 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 um, okay, so I think we were here two weeks ago for the uh, road maintenance plan. Correct. Who is he? Here to approve. The What's your name, sir? Oh, sorry, Chris Stoddard, Director of Public Works. Thank you. Um, we're here just to hopefully approve the contracts for the uh, resurfacing work and the pavement preservation contracts. Um, we had eight contractors bid on the uh, resurfacing project, aggregate won it with a low bid, and we only had a single contractor, Seal Coating Inc., um, bid on the pavement preservation oh, contract. Okay. Any surprises, uh, Chris, from what you ex might have expected? Uh, it was cheaper for the resurfacing than I anticipated. Yeah. So that's that's exciting. Everything, you know, all these construction-related things you hear about the, um, you know, the, uh, inflation increases in price, but it's not showing up here. I huh? haven't seen it. Yeah. We, I mean, they came in quite a bit cheaper than what I thought it was going to be. Good. But only forty nine dollars cheaper than the next lowest. Fifty two dollars yeah. cheaper. <laughs> forty nine, according to you. Oh, was it forty nine? <laughs> no, yeah, it was unbelievably. It was so close. Actually, I did, I did all the math for both those contracts. Fifty one. Sorry, sure fifty one. Yeah. It's I've never seen one that close. <laughs> Why Alicia does the math, not me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I mean, in aggregate, you know, they're a good company. We've never actually, had, I've never, they've never worked for me directly, but. They're big and they've been, been around, around for a long time. Yeah, and seal coating, we only got the one bid, but they've done work now in town for four years straight. Okay. So it's you, you know where to check the references. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm fully comfortable with both contractors. So. Awesome. That's good enough for me. Any questions of Mr. Stoddard? Nope. Leaving you on, Matthew. I move that the select board vote to authorize the town administrator to sign the contracts with Aggregate Industries, Northeast Region Inc. of Saugus for resurfacing and related work, and Seal Coating Inc. of Braintree for microservicing cape sealing and crack sealing. Second. Motion's been made, seconded by Ms. Napoli. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Appreciate all the background information on that. What do you got? The quick, do you have a picture of the... So, about two weeks ago, I got it. Don't the worry. door knocker? Yeah, the door knocker. Two weeks ago, we talked mm -hmm. about the door knocker. Um, it's in their I, packet. I think you all have one in your packet. Yeah. This is the example that we're running with. I can do that too. Mm -hmm. Camera. Um, it's fairly simple. We have it out. Uh, we're hopefully after tonight we can go out and order these. Um, the other thing too is we, since I think it was right back in June when we kind of formalized the department becoming a DPW or being referenced, uh, we kind of, Ashley and I went out and um, kind of solicited some ideas to try to create a new logo. For the department, obviously all of our uh, memos and stuff will still reference the town seal with it. But this is kind of the idea that we were thinking of. I don't know, more just a informational thing, kind of getting you guys' mm -hmm. feedback on it. Um, we think it kind of, you know, shows everything we do: construction, snow plowing, you know, parks, and the transfer station. And we kind of think it's pretty neat. So we just wanted to kind of get your feedback on it and see what you guys thought. Um, we'd obviously, this would kind of be the new seal, we'd put them on the trucks, shirts and stuff like that. But like I said, all the memos would still have the town In seal. lieu of the town seal? On the truck itself. But any formal um, documents would have the town seals with it too. And again, this is, you know, this was our idea. This Concept. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like it. I, it looks nice. I just don't... See the need to lose the town seal. You know, its visibility is not 
huge anyways. It's one of the few places you see it is on the cruises and the and the town trucks. The only thing I'd offer is that there are some communities that'll have the town seal, like at the quarter panel, a smaller seal. It's not the door size yeah. seal, but at the corner panel, we right, actually right above some. or below where the number is. Yeah, we have some. They're about four or five inches. So I, 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 I agree with you to that extent, and I think that maybe if we can be sure to continue to include a seal yeah. on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's not an issue. Like I said, we, are, we still have them for the smaller mm -hmm. vehicles. I like it. Yeah, I think it's, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, PRC, like it. PRC has their logo and yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. LCTV. So, yeah, I like it. Thing. Captures it. I can't think of anything that's missing right. or anything that's going to surprise us and be offensive to somebody. <laughs> I can't see that there. No, looks no. pretty no, good. No, it's good. Should have some of the summer help weed whacking. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite. Yeah, what about the what about the sidewalk plow? I think you, could you yeah, put that in there? Somewhere? I know we <laughs> could to replace the truck plow. Yeah. Yeah. No, it it's good. just iconic, is all I'm saying. So that's it. Great. Thank you. So we don't have any course of action we need to take on that. Just we're not going to stop you from doing it, I guess. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, it was more just a courtesy. If you yell at me and say stuff, no. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thanks. Next up, we have uh, Chief Welcome Clancy, back. Fire Department. Interim Chief Tom Clancy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, in July, we had a department head meeting, at which point uh, it was discussed about working on our 10 year capital plans. So, uh, as I as I looked into purchasing a new ambulance, um, I reached out to a vendor who then informed me about. And for those who've driven by a car dealership, you can see how scarce the new vehicles are. Well, it's no different with the chassis for the ambulances, and they're having a real problem getting chassis. So as I looked at, uh, as we wait till next spring, say it's an annual town meeting, um, the conservative estimate I got from two different ambulance vendors, I'd be looking at the end of 2023 before I would see a new ambulance. Um, because as of the 11th of August, the order period for the 2022s had closed. So ambulance companies buy in bulk. They buy bulk chassis and when they're spoken for, they're spoken for. So I reached out to Anthony. Um, we had a discussion and later that day we had a conference call um, with Alicia and Sean and Gary Wilson and just talking about um, how this is really a priority that I can't wait till the spring. We, we had an ambulance that was ordered. The order was canceled for fiscal reasons. Um, that ambulance, I looked into it. it. They built it, but built it to a different specification that won't work for us. I was fortunate enough to um, find a vendor that has one built and as of two weeks, uh, had a demo in production and two weeks ago got the chip for the chassis. So the chassis is now en route to the factory where it takes approximately six to seven months to build. Um, I have two ambulances currently, uh, 2012, which is pictured here, Medical 2. It's my, uh, what I'll call the, the second ambulance. Um, it responds to second medicals. It's, it's a 2012. It's got 107,000 miles and counting on it. Last year, we spent $10,000 in repairs to it, uh, including the turbocharger. Um, at the time, we needed new ambulances and, and we bought ambulances back to back. Um, so this was ambulance was scheduled to be replaced in fiscal year 20. Um, it was put off and we need to replace it because I need to, what we, um, it's, it's, I can't wait till the end of 2023 to replace these. And both ambulances I have have 100,000 plus miles. So. My, um, can you go to the next slide, Anthony, please? So <clears throat> here's a drawing of an ambulance, which um, this is a concept of what's going to be built. Um, we have $100,000 that's already been approved and, for lack of a better term, free cash available to us. Um, I know there's a number up there of 325. Uh, the number is more 320. Uh, I've worked with the dealer. I've taken some stuff off the ambulance to cut the cost down. So I'm coming before you this evening to ask if we could approve money to buy this. My other ambulance on the third slide is Medical One. Um, that was scheduled to be on 
replacement this fiscal year. But in 19, I put a new suspension system in that uh, to give a better ride for the patient in the back of the ambulance. Also, during COVID, we used CARES money and we put in a new cot loading system that enables the EMTs to not have to lift the patient. So my plan going forward would be to, at Springtown meeting, come before you with a request for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars to rehab this paint-wise and get another three years out of it as my backup ambulance versus coming in and saying back-to-back -back years I need three hundred thousand dollars and then we can utilize money from the ambulance account if if working with the finance director that we keep money aside to put towards buying the next ambulance so that in four years we're making a money transfer from the ambulance account versus capital but by moving this ambulance this one now runs to every medical it's the first due ambulance so before prior to this getting the new suspension system the ambulances were alternated two groups use one ambulance two groups use the other uh, but now this just gives us a, a much better ride for the patient and this ambulance responds to everything so now it's miles are up to uh, we're getting close to 100 and 13,000 on this and it's a year newer than the other one so if I can I'm such a Please. Just, just as a reminder so yeah the, the the purchase of the ambulance was put on hold last fiscal year because we were concerned about the payment the offset payment that from the fire department the ambulance revolving fund to the operating budget um, the numbers are looking a lot better so far um, and then with the information that Tom gave, you know, certainly we recommend that we start. We have two warrant articles that were already approved. The one that was for um, from the annual town meeting of 2020, um, that was for the $100,000 that Tom's references. And then in the special, there was the additional 250 that was a borrowing article. Um, and, and to Tom's, what he mentioned about uh, paying for that possibly out of the revolving fund, we'd like to continue with that right now and, and go through the plan with the borrowing but we may propose um, because we have a certainly a plenty amount of time before the ambulance comes in that we may look at another funding source for that 250,000 as opposed to borrowing again but for the time being we have all the authorizations in place to to proceed that's, that's my key question yeah. yeah so just if I uh, understand what you said uh, clearly there, Tom, and thank you, Anthony, for that uh, reminder course and on everybody's input, I'm, I'm certain, and uh, figuring that, that part out. Uh, the choice really is because of what's available now. If we opt yes on it, we could have the replacement available to us in six to seven months. Yeah, be here next if we summer. don't, and if we wait, we would be looking at two and a half years. Band of 23. Yeah, right. just... No, I have, <laughs> and if I might, um, this particular ambulance, I never thought, I only called them because I deal with them on, on my ladder truck. Yeah. I figured I'd be way out. Groton just purchased one for him, and when Steele told me the price he paid, I called this gentleman and found out he had demos coming. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, was, I was anticipating $25,000 more plus equipment right. than what I'm seeing here, and it's a good, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with the ambulances I've been purchasing. This one just has, it's a nicer finish. It, yeah. You know, it's still a same chassis, but it, it, I couldn't believe it when he, when he quoted it. I was quite, and we changed some things and we took some high item ticket items out of it because we don't need that. But it's, um, yeah, it's it, now that he's got the chassis, I, I'm not an alarmist, but I can't, two and a half years would be hard to keep those things right. running without a lot of cost. Okay. When do we have to pay? Pay on delivery. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some so items like fire trucks, for instance, Matthew, you can um, progress pay. Pre you can prepay the chassis and get a discount. Mm -hmm. But the way our finance, the way we pay, you have to have a a, a title to to pay up front type of thing. Okay. You, generally speaking, from fire trucks, I haven't bought these since 2012 and 13. But um, that's how we've generally bought the last few fire trucks. We prepay the chassis for the discount, and then you pay at the end. So if we wanted to use some of the ambulance, some of the revenue from the ambulance transport, like we can do that. We, the could, we could use that when the ambulance comes in to offset some of the borrowing, for example. Right, and that's okay. what we were talking about. Okay. That's what I was referencing earlier, that you may see a different warrant article for that okay. to finish Great. the payment of that. Thank you. And Matthew, when it's time, I'm sorry, when it's time for a motion, we just read the one on the screen because I changed the one mm -hmm. in the packet. Sure. Thank you. 
Tom, get a question for you, and I get yep. I get the question a lot about mm -hmm. um, there's different types of ambulances. There's the yep. van type. There's the, there's the type one, which is what we use, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, which is built on a truck body, right. better for New England snow. It can get you there. Versus the ones that look like the type one, the type three, I think, are the ones that look like the type one, but they're on a van body right. still, so they don't for traction purposes and things like that. Although they're cheaper. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they're cheaper because they don't do everything that Type One will do. Am I getting that right? Or yeah, it's it goes down to check. It comes down to equipment. So the Type One, um, the box is bigger. Like you have outdoor space uh, compartment storage on the outside, whereas a, whereas a Type Three is a van, and like a Sprinter van type, and there's no outside storage. It's all inside. So for a basic life support or a tran what they call a transfer truck, so your relative is in the hospital and they need to go to rehab, that transfer truck picks them up and takes them. They don't have uh, SCBA tanks, air packs, they don't have fire gear, they don't have all the stuff. And now we're ALS, the paramedic unit. I can't, I can't fit the equipment on those type. And secondly, um, uh, we had a four person transport the other day. So it was three firefighters and a, and a gentleman that was very, very large and the old, you can't put, it can't handle the weight. So, the, and that's not a, a common occurrence, but when it, that's, we used to have the van style, and that was the issue was, you get a much more, a bigger GVW, gross volume of weight on a type one chassis than you can on a van. And I couldn't fit all the equipment in the van style without the outdoors compartment. So that's why we don't use the vans. They can't, you, you're around 14,000 pounds for a van style, 18,000 for a, a class one. So that's why we go with class one. And that's why all the fire departments are doing it now. It just can't handle all the equipment we have to put on it, especially the ALS. Okay, so yeah, I think the type two is the, the van style, but the type, type three. Type three is the van. Type one is the what you're, what you're, the what you've got and what you're proposing yep. to get. Yep. But and I don't, uh, unfortunately. I'm just, I'm just going based on my research and I've, I I've sat down with two different ambulance mm -hmm. outfits that do strictly ambulances. Yep. Um, they don't, you know, they're not a fire department, they're strictly right. ambulances. And, that, and it's like my son's running around the streets of Lowell now, fraternity in, in one, exactly. of those, one of those ambulances. But, you know, he's, he's dressed like I am every day, except when it's cold, he wears a jacket. And he doesn't have to put on bunker pants right. like here and an air pack that we have to, because we can't, we can't move that stuff to the truck because they respond to everything. So it's, I understand. We, I, I, I know. It's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just, but that's really what it comes down to is we can't, the, the trucks can't handle the weight of the equipment we have to carry. And sometimes when you get that many people in the back. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? No, I appreciate everybody working together on this and yep. the foresight so involved I. here. Yes. Yeah. And if I might, um, I don't know. I, I had a conversation with Alicia this afternoon. I thought I was going to see you like six times today, and that just didn't happen. <laughs> so um, I saw the packet, and that's that's the number for the ambulance, but it's the ambulance and the equipment. So, so what's the dollar amount? Three twenty. Three twenty even. Even. Yeah. Oh, you want? Okay. Yeah. And All right. So just change the number to three twenty. Yep. Okay. Yeah, this, thank is, you. this is Lifeline. Yes. Okay. Yeah. New, England, it's, New England Fire and Apparatus was that, year, that's three, what three, I generally do. It was like 304. This was less. Really? It, was yeah. three, it wasn't with equipment. 304 was the number last year without equipment. Yes. Right. Because there's certain equipment that I can't take off the old one and um, I oh, have to have them. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. But I, I am going to be under. Haven't, haven't missed one yet, and I don't plan to start today. So, Since Alicia's in the room, do you have anything to add or any comments relative to the financial impact? Or no, I just think it's, uh, it's wonderful. I think it's able to work collaboratively with both um, Anthony, Joe, Sean on this, and it's been great. And just looking at the emotes revenues and looking at what they're collecting, where they are, what policies are in place, and, you know, he's trying to do the best he can. And, and get a good ambulance for the community and look at policies and look at better collections and Great. just do a good job. Thanks, Alicia. You can pay her later. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sean wants to go to Ed Weenie's now. So. <laughs> 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 That's going to put me back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's no other comments. All right, here we go. Cool. I move that the select board vote to approve the fire department's ambulance purchase order of $320,000 
from the Lifeline Emergency Vehicles for the purchase of a new ambulance authorized by Article 16 of the June 13, 2020 Annual Town Meeting and Article 15 of the October 8, 2020 Special Town Meeting. Second. Motion been made, seconded by Ms. Napoli. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Tom. And do you know what this, you know what this signifies? The first night I've come here and it happened, said, I got some money. I actually <laughs> asked for money. <laughs> My streak is over. <laughs> Thank you. Flip back to the other way, would you? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Tom. Thanks to the whole team for working together on that. Appreciate it. Sean, Alicia, Anthony, and Joe. All right, next up we have an opportunity for public input. Anybody who would like to be heard, please raise your hand and be recognized by the chair. Ma'am. Come to the microphone, please. Just stay your name, address, and two minutes. <laughs> Chris messed us up there. Sorry. Uh, hello, Kim Mayo, 148 Harwood. Um, as a follow to my comments to select board on August 9th, I'm here to outline solutions to help our overdevelopment crisis. Littleton is only a half the state average of protected open space. Thank you. Littleton, here we go. Littleton is at only half the state average of protected open space, trailing just about every town in the region per our LCT. Our water department newsletter also mentions high susceptibility ranking due to development as the main cause. Anyone interested, search open space on next door and you'll see our regional dialogue so far has included residents of 14 towns and Littleton. The general perception is Littleton favors developer interests, which is reflected in our op failing open space grade. We are way out of balance. I recommend these steps. Number one, immediately revitalize or start a new open space planning committee to prioritize open space with several select members of several select board members assigned. Two, join other towns participating in regional climate resiliency committee, which focuses on topics related to open space. Thank you, Pepperell Selectman, for your leadership and offer. Three, follow suggestions in the LCT memo. Four, since Littleton already exceeds the state minimum on affordable housing when 80% of towns do not, Let's shift all focus away from high density affordable residential to making farms affordable and attractive for young families who want to live and work here. Details will be provided. Five, finally, with the Lipoli, Lupoli IBM announcement on the common, the process should be thorough and thoughtful and include resident input. I'm concerned two months will not be enough time before fall meeting, given what happened with Station Village at the 11th hour being taken off the warrant. Open space, I love nature, but even if you don't, it pays for itself quickly by reducing costs and taxes. Thank you, LCT, our group will be making a modest donation. Select board, it's our hope you will take this seriously and put this plan into action, ASAP. The people of Littleton and our region will be monitoring closely and rooting for you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else like to be heard? Okay. We'll move on to member updates. Ms. Napoli. Uh, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the um, I just want to give an, an update from the Affordable Housing Trust. We had a meeting last week and we talked about the Tehadawan Road parcel that was part of the um, MVP acquisition mm -hmm. um, and that was set aside for housing purposes. We'd like to um, talk to the select board about the disposition of that that parcel. We have some ideas about partnering with a nonprofit um, group to uh, follow through with that and actually create um, some form of affordable housing, but we just don't know where to begin at this point um, with the whole process. We want to begin that discussion with the select board. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is the uh, Jerky Farmhouse, um, which is being turned over to um, the town as part of an agreement with the planning board. I have had discussions with that developer. They have um, tested the pro property. They've come up with a septic design um, for the farmhouse. They did suggest that the Affordable Housing Trust look at um, retaining the services of an engineer to look at the structure of the barn and the house itself, and that's something that the Affordable Housing Trust is going to be 
um, looking into so I just wanted to get the board up to date on that as well um, and I just wanted to remind the public there's still two seats available on the master plan implementation committee uh, for citizens at large if anyone is interested in that group to please um, feel free to submit an application through the town's website we'd love to have you uh, come on board and the other thing I wanted to just maybe do is call on mr. Layden who has been extremely helpful um, with the uh, Littleton Station Area Committee meetings. And you had brought up a statistic about, speaking of open space, um, just the amount of open space that we've been, the town has been able to save um, most recently. I thought it was an interesting statistic that could be shared with the public. Yeah, sure. Um, one of the things, and, and it, it helps sort of as, as we, um, uh, you know, just prepare a 2020 annual report we have um, all the town meeting articles and it had occurred um, you know to, to some of us on staff that um, we've actually done a lot over the last 12 months and that in the last 12 months we've essentially permanently protected one whole 100 acres um, that's through uh, to Hadawan, that's through the donation from Amazon, that's through some of the open space that was accepted at annual town meeting, um, also some of the water um, property. So uh, one of the things is that, um, you know, there's a lot of types of projects that get all the, the, the front page coverage, you know, economic development, that's something that's really out there in the open. But one of the things that we do, and, and I believe the board knows, especially MVP, that was not easy. <clears throat> um, it took a lot of work, uh, and it takes time, um, but that the town has taken a lot of actions um, in order to permanently protect uh, land and um, just adding it up. Everyone kept spouting out off numbers during that meeting. It's like, you got over 100 acres there just in the last 12 months, and that is something to be recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Napoli. Mr. Glavy. I'm all set tonight. Thank you. Okay, you bet. <clears throat> I uh, just very briefly, I've been working on housing authority um, stuff, and I had a great conversation with Jamie Eldridge today, but also uh, a resident reached out to me unbidden to, to help with some substantial advice and I just thought that was a really nice gesture and I feel very supported. Sometimes this is like banging your head against a wall, but not today. <laughs> so go team. <clears throat> <laughs> Great. Thanks, Matthew. Mr. Knox. Uh, Anthony's already mentioned it, but I want to bring it up again about third Thursday on, on this Thursday is postponed. And I want to regret bring it up because we've gone almost two years without one, and this, this is the only one of the year. So if people can drop by the support, that would be appreciated. Great. Um, I've got a couple things. One of them is um, relative to the uh, HCA. That's fine. You can leave it up there. Uh, relative to the HCA for uh, collective, that's uh, a work in progress. So just as a, as a general update, um, also uh, working. Paul and I are working with um, the augers and um, trying to make some progress on the orchard. Nothing really to um, update on, but uh, we do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow. Um, so hopefully we can have some updates at our next meeting. Also, I had mentioned that um, I had reached out as a member of the select board and um, economic development committee to Peter Milano, who is the senior director of Mass Office of Business Development, and got a uh, meeting scheduled for next Monday, which I may pull uh, one of the two of you in, as well as uh, another member of the EDC, um, to discuss all things Littleton. There's a, there's a lot going on in Littleton. We had a preliminary discussion already uh, relative to the sewer and um, the potential of the revitalization of the common, the Northern Bank of Trust project and uh, certainly the IBM property, the, uh, the train station. So there's a lot going on, the Amazon development. So they're, they're kind of interested in what's going on in Littleton, and, and uh, I'm excited to have that, have that meeting with them. Uh, I'm glad, Cindy, you brought up the, the fact that there, there is uh, a lot going on when it comes to our open space. There's a project going on right now. I think uh, Mr. Mullen and, uh, and Kathy Miller, uh, as well as Sean, are working on trying to identify what spaces we have, whether they're in tax title or, or just spaces that we've either acquired over the years or been given over the years or taken through uh, um, taken title on so there's a um, 
quite a few square feet, a lot of acres that are available to us to you know, make some decisions on and see see how we want to approach that. But uh, I think that some of the information that's been that's been um, communicated from this podium and, and on the internet is uh, erroneous. It's it's uh, it's outdated, and um, we, I think that we have. Uh, uh, a lot of great things that we're working on, and I'm, I'm very proud to be sitting with you guys and, and have uh, put, I think it's 104 acres into the into the open space coffers over this past year alone. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hats off to all of us and, and to all those that were uh, instrumental in making that happen. Um, the other thing that is kind of near and dear to me is uh, there's a fundraiser coming up on September 11th, and it's a fundraiser in memory of Denise Pagasik and Denise was an absolute gem, uh, an individual that worked for the town, um, did so much for so many in town, and um, just a, a friend to our community. She certainly, um, she left us far too soon, but her husband and her sons, uh, Ivan and uh, Michael and Matthew, have, uh, along with, um, I believe Dave Ketchin has been pretty instrumental in helping them out with doing fundraising and um, continuing to carry on Denise's legacy. So there is a, f a fundraising event at the Tiki Bar at Neshoba Ski on September 11th. The website and everything is, uh, you can reach out to me or this this now will be part of our packet, right? If you want to just check out our packet, you can uh, you can register a team and uh, it should be, a, should be a great event. So um, it's from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the 11th. So hopefully we can get, uh, raise some money and, and continue to carry on Denise's legacy and the money's have gone to graduating seniors in a scholarship in Denise's name and, and I'm sure that there's there's much more that is going to be done with with the funds that are raised so always strong cornhole tournament check it out thank you Anthony all right um, next up we have our fiscal year 2023 draft budget calendar I feel like I should be Tooting a horn or something to bring you guys up here. For this. <coughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to say that this is the first meeting that Alicia Nunley Benjamin has been before us as a board. Um, welcome. Excited thank to you. see you here. Alicia Nunley Benjamin, Director of Finance and Budget. Thank you, Your Honorable Body, for having me here tonight and being able to present the calendar to you. Um, as we start to think about the fiscal year 23 budget, we are starting with the capital planning early this year in August. For departments to project 10-year capital plan needs based on four measures of priority. This will allow the town to better plan for large capital purchases, prioritize needs more effectively with limited town resources. It is our goal to present a 10-year capital plan with projected available funds for review and decision making by your body. I will then present uh, with Sean a five-year financial forecast to the town in October that will be based primarily on financial trend analysis. I'll be working collaboratively with Sean on uh, a PowerPoint presentation. I'm going to focus primarily on the revenues while Sean focuses, excuse me, primarily on expenses. Budget documents uh, will be issued to all departments in October with the instructions. Um, I have met with Chief Assessor Kathy Miller and who will be working diligently to get ready for the tax classification hearing scheduled for November 8th. Uh, we are being conservative as new growth could slow down due to the current economic recession. Uh, final budget requests will be due November 12th for the town departments and the school preliminary budget will be due December 10th. The preliminary fiscal year 23 budget book will be submitted to your honorable body and the honorable finance committee by December 31st. I look forward to working with all departments the select board, the finance committee, the school committee, the superintendent, the school business manager, and Littleton residents, and providing a balanced and transparent budget. Joint board meetings will begin January, starting with the smaller departments and having the larger departments meet on Saturday. There will be a joint capital and budget working session scheduled for February with the special town meeting warrants open and annual town meetings proposed for May 2022 with the final budget book produced by March 31st. Identifying the board's long-term priorities through the capital and budget process will allow for efficient planning and adherence with the town's policies. And if you have any questions. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love it. Thank you. This is succinct. It's uh, <laughs> delivering the goods. <laughs> Please. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Alicia, and I, and I appreciate that some of the, um, uh, the more nuanced aspects of our historical budget process um, I wanted to touch on. I see you've actually already incorporated some of that in here. I think you're just as aware as everyone else here in the town is that we've we've unfortunately had, uh, and just t to a certain extent unavoidably, had some turnover between Bonnie leaving to go into Bolt, uh, up to Bolt, uh, to Carlisle at the time, and then um, we had Cheryl here, and she was terrific, but then, you know, she moved to a place closer to home. We had Sean in an acting capacity for a bit. So it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and, and in the middle there, Anthony, you know, was filling in, in you know, in between two. So, um, you know, I, I just have angst about, uh, you know, we have a, a terrific uh, working, collaborative working uh, history of getting a lot of things done and done well with, you know, finance committee selectmen. Uh, various departments and uh, town hall staff working closely together and I you know it's, it's the little you know things that uh, that make it work out that way and a couple of things were just missed understandably because of the you know the volatility uh, over the past couple of years that um, I, I think it's important at the beginning of the process to not lose what what goals are we trying to achieve you know we specifically as the uh, select board but also the town as a whole and that should be at the beginning part of the process. We had a cycle where that didn't happen. I'm happy to see you've got that plugged right in here. Um, you know, similarly, later on in the game when departments are uh, crafting their individual budget proposals, uh, recommend or uh, requests anyway, uh, if uh, I suppose directly, the, the, the direct reports to our board, you know, we, we need to see those before they end up in the in the process because I, I you know it sounds sounds so obvious but we did have a situation where a couple of years ago we, we were learning about requests of our you know some of our departments at the uh, summit at the summits where we were considering that and you know unaware of it so um, especially given all the the turnover we've had I think it's uh, paying attention to the process along the way is, is so key and then the end game, you know, it's this is more. It's not you won't find it in any bylaw or or the state law. But what we always strive for, and in the close to forty years that Joe and I, I guess, have been involved, and everyone else, we've always arrived at town meeting where the selectmen and the finance committee are in agreement on a budget proposal, and that's where we want to end up. That's, you know, it's it's those powers aren't. Uh, it's pretty uh, uh, ambiguous in our bylaws as to where that all falls, but. Uh, it's never become a major problem because we've always tried to work toward that end point. So um, I just wanted to kind of get those things out there. I'm sure you picked up some of that already in talking to people, but uh, the, uh, the calendar that you've proposed here, I think is terrific, fine with me, um, you know, and I think we ought to just uh, make sure we have some of those. And we, we have, you know, we've always tried to incorporate the policies that we take very seriously as part of this too. Although between turnover and the whole disruption of COVID, we haven't uh, we haven't revisited those annually for the past year or two as we are obligated to do, and I think we want to get back on track on that. It's kind of a separate but parallel track with the budget process. But uh, you know, the ones that we have adopted and lived, uh, you know, taken seriously and lived by, I think have served us very well. But they're they're due for some review and uh, well I think you uh, have identified a key problem area in our whole big budget picture in terms of probably improving our review and uh, review process for capital budgeting that, that's long overdue to, to be addressed so I'm, I'm glad you're grabbing that right off the top there's probably other things in terms of financial policies that after a couple of years time it's worth going back and especially with all the sets of new eyes we've got in our finance team Take advantage of all your outside experiences and and uh, you know uh, improve the operation we've got going. But that's a long way of saying I like what you've got here. <laughs> but context is everything, so uh, you know um, uh, going to do everything we can to make sure you're as successful with this as I think you're going to be. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy, any comments? <laughs> Did I leave anything? No, that's why I, I think Cindy's all set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Nothing left to say, right? Good work. Um, 
I'm thrilled to see the process here, and uh, I think we have been missing the goal setting. I'm curious, like, I think we should discuss how we're going to approach yeah. that because I think it's very important that we do it for prior to the October Correct. 12th meeting yeah. right. with so the department heads. And, um, We've talked about it yeah. a few times, okay. yeah, I need to schedule that. It, we, we just have. Well, we put aside a couple of meetings yeah. in, in September. Right. Yeah. Right. We just need to formalize some of that stuff. Okay, I good. Think. As long yeah. as we're committed to that, I want to be committed to that. Yes. That's all. Okay. Well, is that Paul covered everything? <laughs> Thanks, Paul. I thought he was trying to mess up the over-under on me. <laughs> <laughs> and through the chair, to be honest, it was collaborative. This was not all me. This was definitely uh, Anthony Ansali, Joseph Lade, and Sean O'Brien. Um, I'm really blessed to have a really great finance team, and I'm so happy and thankful to be here in Littleton. We're also thankful and grateful and happy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Thanks, leave out Ms. Miller. She's going to tell you how much money you get to spend, right? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it close. Keep it close. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Thank Lisa. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, team. All right, 7A, special town meeting warrant for October 25th, 2021. Insertion of articles, Mr. Insolvi. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, to, to both of these can be combined together. I think that we have three articles right now that are ready uh, to be inserted. The first one is Article 1, which is bills of prior year. Unfortunately, we do have some bills of prior year. The goal is to never have bills of prior year before and make sure that they're paid on time going forward, but we do have some that will have to be addressed at the special. Uh, so the board could vote to insert that. Article 11, which is an easement uh, to the Littleton Electric Light Department for the new library. So we, uh, you, there's the language there. You could insert that article tonight. And the last article, and it's not in numerical order, but Article 10, uh, this is the personnel bylaw. This is something that's been vetted by the personnel <coughs> committee. It's been discussed at a, at a prior select board meeting. Uh, we were supposed to have a meeting and present the changes to the employees today. We needed to um, postpone that until next week due to unforeseen circumstances. So that has to happen, but certainly the board could insert that as to anything else that we do. It's always the subject to form by town council. So if there are any other adjustments that are being recommended, that we would bring that back to the board at our next meeting. But other than that, there hasn't been any changes by the personnel committee from the, the last time that we met, other than the, the couple of minor changes. Yeah. And the personnel committee has met since we last discussed it. That's correct. Right. Twice, we, I think, actually. Twice, right. We met with two of the members that actually couldn't be there, Kathy Miller being one um, from the employee management side, and then uh, John Gazanjian from the um, uh, non-employee union, non-union, non-management employee uh, side. So, and both of them had no comments with or, or recommended changes to the personnel bylaw. I just offer that one of the reasons we wanted to wait to insert it was so that the the employees would have an opportunity to see it. So I don't see any sense of urgency in us voting on it tonight. Not at all. Give them that same opportunity that we. The reason we were going to have it tonight was it was going to be after. Uh, Michelle being here and the, the employees having an opportunity to review it. So um, I just offer that maybe we, we hold off until our next yeah, I don't meeting. think there's any harm in that. It's, you know, it hasn't changed in a couple of weeks. No. And another and September 7th isn't right. going to be. And normally we would have had the meetings today and said everything's okay. So right. we would have been good today, but because we needed to pivot. So right. that certainly mm -hmm. can be held off till the September 7th meeting, which I think will be a heavier Agenda. meeting with uh, warrant articles. Okay. You okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. But as far as the other two, you want to, do you want to place them? The other them? two, so there's a motion up there. I would just say just exclude uh, Article 10 and just do 1 and 11. Okay. Uh, well, the initial motion was, okay, you, you included them all in the same motion up here. Okay. Right. But Matt will only read 1 and 11. Yeah, I'll read 1 and 11. I have a, I have, I have a quick question, though, unrelated to about Article 4. Where did we land on the abatement? Like, which process did we end up deciding on? So we still have to review that with town council because part of that article is it requires a ballot. Um, okay. Uh, at the at the uh, a ballot vote by the electorate. Okay. So we're still working on that to know is this something that we should have at this town meeting or is it 
require a special election, which we certainly wouldn't want to do, or okay. we just wait we can until. Cover that. Yeah, so there's more to work mm -hmm. on in that article. Very good. Um, are we ready for a motion? I think so. Move that the select board vote to insert the following articles onto the warrant for the 2021 special town meeting, subject to approval as to form by town council. One, bills of prior years, majority or nine tenths vote. 11, grant of easement to Littleton Electric Light Department for library. Second. Motion's been made, seconded by Ms. Napoli. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous, great, thank you. Um, so you rolled 7B into that, right? I did. Okay, thank you. So town administrator, assistant town administrator updates, COVID-19 sure. working group, you wanna sure. <clears throat> jump on that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the first thing is, um, in light of the school committee uh, vote to not require masks at this time uh, and, and Superintendent Clenchy uh, discussion that I had with him, we thought it really would be best to create a, a COVID-19 working group. So I formed that group and on that is myself, Superintendent Clenchy, our Assistant Town Administrator Joe Layden, uh, there's uh, Katrina. Mr. Graffi. Uh, I'm sorry? Mr. Graffi. Jim Goreffi, uh, Katrina Wilcox Hagberg, uh, the chairman Lisa Flanagan of the Board of Health, just uh, select board chair, as well as the school, school committee chair. Um, so we met today for the first time and to talk about issues that are facing us now and that will continue to face us uh, as the pandemic is certainly not over by any stretch. I think we're starting to see that the numbers um, have risen uh, in the past couple of weeks. And right now, Middlesex County and in, in that map, we're in the red, and this is from the CDC's website. So what the committee wanted to do is be able to recommend something to the Board of Health and the Select Board at a joint meeting that's scheduled for this Wednesday. So what the committee was in favor of right now was really following the CDC guidelines but not just looking at it from Littleton, but looking at it Middlesex County. And the reason behind that is because Littleton right now is in the orange, but we're, our data always lags behind. So by the time we're red, it's usually the same time that the county is red. So uh, we wanted to look at the metrics for Middlesex County and, and follow that guideline. So what does that call for in the CDC? Here is the latest uh, updates from the CDC. Yeah, before you jump into that, sure. the, the, the latest updates that we've gotten through Mr. Greffi are, uh, are dated the 12th and the 19th of August. Correct. And there were 12? 12 um, cases confirmed on the 19th. Right. Right, which is the most recent two week look back. So, um, and what, what, what is the number that pushes us into red out of orange? Is it 15? I don't think they, they identified a, a number, but I think it was that it was that Middlesex had what two weeks ago was also in the orange and that we were trending the same way. So we're just a little bit delayed and that the coming this Thursday, we would get the local data and it was anticipated that then we would we would be also be in the red. Time. Right. But Jim also said that there's a, a cohort from a wedding that had a large percentage of the data that we were looking at. So there's I mean. I don't think it's necessarily linear to Middlesex County, so I don't want to, I don't want to make that assumption. Um, but on Wednesday, um, we, we did post for a meeting this Wednesday uh, jointly with the Board of Health. They've got a meeting on Wednesday to discuss. Um, say jointly, is it joint meeting of selectmen? Select board and well, all right. So we're just finding, I'm just finding yeah, the, the, I apologize. It's, it's the, we're just kind of confirmed it. I, I did ask Anthony to post it last week and I didn't reach out. I just, it, it was initially just going to be for us to be able to be present at the meeting, but I said in the event that all five of us are there, we should post. So that's why the agenda came out today. Joe had sent out an agenda. It was decided on Friday. Single. I was not here on Friday. And then the agenda got finalized and discussed with uh, the chair, and then it got posted today. So that was really confirmed. Yeah, I well, I've, I've got a con as much as I'm interested in, I've got a conflict. Six o'clock? Yeah, six yeah. o'clock. It's, it's, um, it is six o'clock, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Via um, Rather than us not be able to take a, any action on Wednesday, I, did, I made the judgment call to just post it. And if we don't have a quorum, we don't have a quorum. We just won't be able to 
make any decisions on Wednesday. But I mean, it, it is what it is, Paul. It's, it's yeah. going to be a meeting, and if we can make it, we can make it. If we can't make it, then so be it. Um, we can be heard, certainly, but um, we won't be speaking as a as a board with a, with a decision being made. I, I certainly support the uh, recreation of a working group on this. We had one of these right off the bat yeah. when the you know when Joe was our representative of that, and the issues were. I remember some of the issues at the time were. Uh, specific to the park and recreation department. So I look at this list, and I, I and also it seems obvious that the uh, council on aging should have a, a representation. A representation there too. So I wonder whether you might want to include those folks. But in a bigger picture, I assume the biggest and best value of the working group on this issue is this is constantly changing data and timeliness. So sharing of information uh, as rapidly as possible should yeah. be, and as widely as possible, ought to be the real mission. Otherwise. Um, you know, if we're just getting updates every couple of weeks at a meeting, that's not. You know. Agreed. Yep. The, the, yeah. I'll, I'll the working group's going to meet every Monday at three thirty. It's a standard meeting, and then we'll certainly update the board and departments as to any changes that happen. The chiefs were also in attendance, and the police chief and the fire chief were involved, right? But uh, elder and human services is a. Is a demographic that we even discussed today that we should have attending these it's not really a voting body it's just uh, you know, mostly it's an advisory group of right kind of right. like the old chair of the chairs uh, but the in terms board, of the board of chairs people who disseminate information to large groups of folks or have input correct. from large groups correct i mean park and rec as i say would be uh, similar you know they have a, a big chunk of the town that they serve uh, mm -hmm. uh whether the, the, you, yeah however so you want to structure it's fine i'm just saying they Keeping people in the information loop in both mm -hmm. directions is key to making it work. The way it really came about is after the school committee made the decision, um, there was a lot of information being bounced around, some of which was accurate, some of which was not. Um, that, and there was a lot of calls and going to the Board of Health and coming to us. And so there's, there was a lot of information being bounced around. Um, Anthony, Joe, myself, Superintendent Clenchy, I think that was it at that point. We just kind of got on a call, and, and, and Lisa. Oh, no, Lisa was unavailable. She wasn't able to get on the call. Um, just to try to do, do we do we leapfrog what the school the school committee put in place? Do we allow them to be autonomous and, and follow their own duly elected board? Um, it sounds like DESE is going to pretty much take that decision out of their hands within the next day or two. Um, by putting a mask mandate in place through October 1st in all likelihood, which certainly can change at any time based upon data. Um, so, I, Paul, I totally agree with you. It's it's a very fluid um, topic and um, very much should be disseminated as, as often as necessary and too much information is not possible. Right. But um, so it, it kind of came it's from. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I well, yeah. I mean, certainly we want to we want to get in front of that as well. So right. we want to make sure that data we have is is uh, good data. And, and there's there was some healthy conversations today about um, you know personal liberties and and whether we we have we, we move forward with um, whatever CDC recommends. And that's what Anthony was just about to get into before I before I jumped in. But um, you know, based upon the the current uptick. Um, I can give you my personal opinion. I don't think we should be mandating um, what grocery stores or restaurants or private businesses are doing in the in the the bounds of the town of Littleton. Um, I think it's a personal choice. But again, that wouldn't be a topic to be covered by a, the working group. That's something that ought to be debated at board meetings of elected boards. You know, board, Agreed. Board Absolutely. Board school committee. To us. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. With that. I'm just giving you my opinion. But yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but I think it's 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 well needed to, to form this and keep it going, because I think we've all gone through it. Every day, I read an article. You sent me an article, and then we did some more research. This thing's bouncing all over the place. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the correct thing is to do right now, and I don't know what all the facts are. So, whatever we can bring out to try to educate ourselves and the townspeople, it's fine with me. 
Yeah, that, mean? that was the intent. I, I think, as Chuck mentioned, uh, Commissioner Riley is asking Desi to grant him the authority to make mass mandatory through all the school districts through October 1st. So um, if I was a betting man, that's going to happen tomorrow. Nice. And that will take the burden off of the school committee because that's going to be mandated from Desi. So um, that's just, like I said, if I was a betting man, that's going to happen. Uh, certainly we talked about other events. You know, th the most important thing that we all can do is get vaccinated, right? For those that haven't, you know, we can't stress enough that that's going to help the transmission. But in the meantime, there's some uh, CDC uh, regulations that uh, or recommendations that came up. Fully vaccinated people to wear a mask in public settings in areas of substantial or high transmission. So because we're in a, a high transmission area in Middlesex County, that's it's really recommending that people do that. Added information that fully vaccinated people might choose to wear a mask regardless of the level of transmission, particularly if they are immunocompromised or at an increased risk of severe disease from COVID-19. Uh, so this is more items that will be discussed at the meeting on, on Wednesday, uh, but I just wanted to share this with you. Also, we talked about uh, doing some uh, local vaccinations again to try that. So with that, Jim Greffy told us about the mobile vaccination van. So I did put a request into DPH today to see, I know it's last minute, if they could come out the third Thursday and park the van over there and we could uh, possibly get that information out there. They did say in the request anything other than seven days, it's it's unlikely. Unlikely, uh, but you know we'll, we'll continue to try. So if we can't get it here for third Thursday, maybe there's another event that we can sponsor, maybe have the van up at the point, do it collaboratively with other communities. So those that want to get vaccinated, certainly it's easy enough to get the vaccine just by going to COVID, uh, by going to CVS at Littleton or Westford, or any surrounding uh, community that, that has that. But uh, if there's a way that we can do it, if there's some of our seniors that need help, we talked about using our COA vans to transport them to the, uh, to the bus. So we're going to, if we can make it work for Thursday, that's great. If not, then we're going to try to do another date uh, to have the van. It's important to reinforce. We're not saying that it's mandated that people have to get the vaccine. We're just saying, no, no, we're just, we just trying to make, make it. it. We're, we're at about 73% town wide. Right. Um, for the, for the population that's been measured. But we, there, there are some gaps in um, the 20 to 60 year old range. There's, right. a, there's a gap and that's, that's what's bringing the number down, if you will. And um, if this facilitates access to people that will do it, if it's just right there in front of them, whether it be a third Thursdays or you know, we, we, we locate it here at Town Hall or we put it up to point or something like that. If, if someone that wouldn't take the time to go to CVS can just walk on a bus and get the vaccine might, might be able to tick up the number a little bit um, but no way are we saying people have to get the vaccine no nobody's saying that um, and and with the recent FDA approval of the Pfizer uh, for full uh, approval that maybe will trigger some folks to maybe they were waiting for that um, we're just trying to make it easier for people that want to uh, have uh, get the vaccine to get the vaccine That's all I have with that. Thank you. Joe's going to talk about West Lawn. Okay. So, um, uh, in your packet, uh, board members, uh, is uh, uh, information regarding uh, the selection of winning bid for the West Lawn Cemetery expansion. Um, I was working with staff from the cemetery for a planned. Um, expansion uh, that involves uh, one acre of land, clearing trees, removing roots, underbrush, uh, grading, and hydro seeding. Uh, it, the um, uh, bid opening was back on August 13th, and the winning um, bid was MJ uh, Cataldo. Uh, so uh, from the board tonight, looking for authorization for the town administrator or assistant town administrator to sign a contract with MJ Cataldo of Littleton for the expansion of uh, West Lawn Cemetery. Any questions? Yeah, just a timeline. I know we, we had, uh, what was it, last last fall we were over and uh, got a little tour of the, yeah. the site. And I was just uh, curious as to whether you know offhand, Joe, is this supposed, are they hoping to get this work done before winter? Yes, yes, actually, um, uh, 
an acre isn't that much. They really should be able to take care of this pretty quickly. Um, the um, uh, request for proposals had, uh, or invitation for bid, had a uh, completion date of October 1st, 2021 to get this work done. Uh, the hope is that the hydro seed will be down with enough of uh, remaining of the cool growing season to at least get it established. Great. Good. Ready? Ready. <clears throat> Uh, I move that the select board vote to authorize the town administrator, assistant town administrator, to sign the contract with MJ Cataldo of Littleton for the expansion of the West Lawn Cemetery. Second. Motion been made, seconded by Mr. Glavy. All those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. Next up, we have the fire department billing. So th this is the uh, billing contract for the ambulance service. So. Um, uh, after uh, Chief Clancy some, uh, requested some uh, bids from individuals and, and we looked at the work that the current contractor did, it was recommended to uh, proceed with Coastal Medical Billing Solutions for the next three years. Okay. What did, so, didn't see the bid before it went out, but um, Coastal was the existing contractor. And did anything change in what the deliverable is going to be to help them to meet our expectations? Did we change anything in the bid, the bid documents to up their game? Did we put any metrics in there or anything like that? No, I mean, I, I don't think there's, I don't think they're underperforming. I know, I mean, it's, they're, they're very helpful company to work with and that was we, we set out we, we acquired three companies and they came back okay coastal was the one that came back in and they were the ones that did better than the previous one so yeah we got to mix it up okay yeah right, right this is the one when we in 18 when we started the ALS okay. this is the company we went with because that's who all our surrounding towns are using okay and you've got what but two three years worth of experience with them now three yeah three three years yeah and you're three I mean even it was you know they even when the contract a little they were fine they kept they kept the yeah. same job they, they do an excellent job and they're very you call them uh and they're very responsive i think you're thinking about the con i think about the four yeah that yeah. weren't that we didn't particularly yeah. care for yeah okay. and also it should be noted that uh coastal also had the um highest collection rate out of the respondents mm. okay great. good excellent we're all set yes Move that the select board vote to authorize the town administrator, assistant town administrator, to sign the three-year contract with Coastal Medical Billing of Sutton, Mass. for the collection and, and administration of medical billing services. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded by Mr. Knox. <laughs> all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. There's a tie. Tie goes to the runner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Land sale request by a butter. Did you go? Uh, yes. Um, so, uh, had previously sent along to the board uh, the request from the butter of parcel U14-11. That's what's uh, highlighted uh, in your packet. Um, and uh, one of the things that was requested of staff was basically to um, bring in front of the board for having a discussion as far as how to proceed. Um, the under the um, bylaw, uh, we have two processes: a, a small butter lot program, um, and then also just a, a request for for purchase. Uh, this parcel is too large for the small butter uh, parcel program um, that caps out at 4,800 square feet. Um, but this isn't that much larger. Um, but it does it does um, trigger uh, the need to uh, go to RFP um, in order to. Uh, solicit responses for for selling it uh, the butter had approached uh, the town to acquire it the intent that was stated to me was to maintain it as open space and to prevent it from being uh, developed um, should any other um, a butter uh, acquire the property uh, so prior to sending these off to the land sale committee want to get um, uh, give the board opportunity just to discuss as far as moving forward um, and just uh, have that discussion within your packet besides the um, uh, plan showing the location was also a determination from the building commissioner 
uh, this parcel, uh, U14-11, is not uh, buildable. Um, it doesn't have the required frontage. Uh, so it would not be able to be uh, purchased and acquired as a buildable lot. By itself. By itself, correct. Which lot is this? Number, number nine is the lot, is the purchaser. 66, Shaker Lane. Made the request, yes. Lot and number 11, nine. Would be 11, the 11 is the one yeah, requested. Yeah, Correct, okay. yes. So combining those two parcels would be how much, in the event that we did agree to sell 11 and it would get, it would get merged with nine, what would that total acreage be? Um, that property owner would have about an acre. Okay. Just light. So there, I believe the um, building commissioner also opined that there's um, language that we can put in there that would restrict. It, yeah, deed the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just what, what the, um, the the current yeah. owner is stating that they want to make sure they protect it and they keep it open space yeah. and whatnot. So um, we can certainly put language in there if. if yeah, and when we, we draft, we, we draft the RFP to go out. Correct. We can certainly yeah. put that in there. Yeah. yeah, we've encountered that issue before. Mm -hmm. I mean, years ago we had clever folks that you know put things together and slipped them by us uh, decades ago i should say but uh yeah if if that's it it's both consistent with the town's adopted policy of not trying to create additional lots in congested areas mm -hmm. and if that's what the, the likely buyer is looking for too then we'll make it simple for everybody and put a deed restriction in there uh, i'm in favor of, <clears throat> of i'm in favor of this i i love that he wants to put it into basically, you know, keep it from being developed. Uh, what would the real, what would the reality of say splitting it and letting him purchase 4,800 square feet of that without, without going to RFP so that we don't, you know, we, we can encourage him to do it at a price that's reasonable instead of for, for some reason having someone come and bid against him. Have to do a subdivision of the property first. We'd have to deed it. Yeah, we'd have okay. To, we'd have so to that's all the engineering done and <coughs> deed right. stuff. So, you know, so the, the, the question ends up being: if you divide it in half, then where does the other half go? If then the abutter at thirteen doesn't want it, and the guy at nine says, "Well, I'll take that as well," then essentially that's bid splitting. Got it. Okay. No matter what, we'd have to go to town meeting for authorization. Um, and realistically, I, I know RFP sounds. You know, those three letters can make it sound like a very uh, lengthy and detailed process. It doesn't need to be. You know, we establish exactly what we're looking for. There's perimeters under 30B that we follow. Um, we did it for a cemetery expansion, so we can right. handle that. And town meeting uh, authorization is probably the biggest hurdle. Right. Okay. Who, who owns parcel three? Someone in New Jersey. Correct. And they wouldn't be able to merge those in order to create a, a building lot because one, uh, three fronts on a paper street. So if, if they wanted to say acquired in order to merge with 11 and make a building lot, they'd first have to improve that paper street to comply with subdivision standards. The second thing is that has just as little frontage as parcel 11 and also is um, not buildable. Right, and so parcel 13 as well um, in the event, parcel the owner of parcel thirteen came in and bid on this and say they get win the bid, it would still be deed restricted. So they wouldn't then be able to subdivide their lot right. to create two buildable lots. Right. Okay. Yeah, as long as we put that restriction on there, it goes with, with the proposal. And we'll put it out to bid as a non-buildable. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion, or are we just uh, moving? No, the basis just to the land use. The, uh, the uh, sweet, great committee. We just we had some conversations kind of after the fact after the um, what's what's the name of the Manchester yeah but what's the name of the, um, the committee oh land sale land sale committee yeah mm -hmm. had already met when we became aware of the last one so I just asked that Joe bring this to us and make us aware of it yeah. thank you for doing it Joe eight yep. um, e you Anthony eight e yes yeah. so we gotta try to get you want to try to get Tom yep um, let me. Get things switched over here. So at our last meeting, uh, we've been discussing what what grounds we have or what what we can do relative to the the TIF that was granted to IBM, and the question was asked by uh, Mr. Sanders. Yes. Yeah, so so with Tom, 
at my back now. Uh, Kathy, Mari, our chief assessor, and Tom, we, we had some discussions about this, and Kathy shared this chart, um, which was pretty good information. Back in 2009, that parcel at 550 King Street was only valued at about $30 million, and once IBM came in there, well, that price jumped after the improvements to the buildings uh, to $60 million. So... With the average, if the average commercial tax rate, and Kathy shared this information, I wanted to bring it to the board. The, uh, the average commercial tax rate from 2019 through 2020. Me, this information we didn't have this. No, this all came in today. Okay. Okay. Happy to share this after. Yeah, yeah. So the average, with the average commercial tax rate of twenty-seven dollars thirty-four cents per thousand, back in 2009, the assessed value at thirty million dollars. FY 20. Uh, that should be 2029, Kathy, 2009 to 2020. Oh, I just was trying to do like a 10 year. All right, but I don't think we got the years right in that. But if, so okay, it should be 2012 to 2020. 2012, yeah, sorry. 2012 to 2020, the, the value jumped to $60 million. So if IBM didn't come to Littleton, then based on the previous assessed value, that would have been $820,000 per year, and over the course of 10 years, that was $8.2 million in taxes. With IBM coming to Littleton, uh, that jumped to $60 million, and at the $27.34 tax rate, we collected $16 million. Also, which should be um, mentioned that during that time, that helped the tax rate shift for the commercial on the commercial side so the residents saved as well by having that uh, ibm in town um so and then uh, tom you can if you want to jump in and speak to the fulfillment of the tiff by Actually, ibm can we before we move yeah, on yeah, here, i got a couple of <laughs> so, yep. so what what would we have made if ibm came to littleton without a tiff agreement Exactly. In other words, what was as, the, as they said in the newspaper in the, the Boston Globe at the time, we were coming anyway, whether we got a tax break or not. So the real number we should be looking at is what Matthew just said. What what's the differential? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no telling whether they would have come to Well, I'm just going by what they and what they state. I wasn't here back then. Yeah, so this isn't directed at you no, as much no, no, as. No, no, no. I actually understand. I, I'm just speaking to the fact that. Buildings depreciate. If you were to look at the previous assessments, it was already on the decline before IBM decided to come here, and they made the promise to put money into the building. And, and just in my opinion, they, they did fulfill it. I, you know, I added up all the building permits this morning just to see, and it was over the amount that they specified that they were going to put into the building. They did put it in there. There's new windows. I mean, they did the new roof, the solar panels on top of the roof. They did numerous fit-ups, and they really did invest into that building, and that is part of a tip is there's certain agreements made, and one could say that they wouldn't have come, but if somebody came in that wasn't as big as IBM, who's to say they would have had the money to put into that building, and that building wouldn't have depreciated over time? But what, 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 how, much did they, how much did they save on taxes? Like what was the what was the amount of taxes that they were that they had the discount, or what, what was the value? I know it started at twenty five percent. It was twenty five percent of what value? So I, I told Anthony it was hard because the previous assessor didn't keep really good records, so I couldn't go back and find the dollar value. I can tell you that in the past five years, I think it, um, what is I think it was like thirty eight thousand dollars they say roughly in tax dollars a year. But we, I mean, we must have records of like what they paid and they, they must have kept records of what they did not pay. I can't, like, are we saying that we gave them a tax break and we never followed up on how much we didn't get? So we could research <clears throat> it, but I told Anthony, it's, it's just very time consuming to well, go okay, back and to find that information where I didn't know what point we're getting at, when, whether it was, you know what I mean, they fulfilled their requirements and all I was saying in my opinion, they did it. it it's it's what it's for i mean to go back to the dollar value we can go back and spend hours in my you, office you're you being know, put, i think you're, you're the wrong person to be put in this position <laughs> for, for, for facts i mean you say they fulfilled their agreement well we 
we don't know that. We don't have that agreement in front of us. Uh, I mean, I, you know, that's I'm wondering whether the proper place to ask the questions of what to do with a company that hasn't, uh, that pulls out before the term of their agreement is over would be, does the Department of Revenue have, uh, do they have a, a, um, a protocol for that? I mean, this can't be the first or only time it's happened. I mean, I, you know, it's a legal question as much as anything. There's a formal agreement and if they didn't live up to it, then what's the recourse? What, how does the state treat it? Respectfully through the chair, I've seen tax incremental uh, financing agreements that usually do have some sort of stipulation. I haven't looked at this, but they usually do have a stipulation if you don't follow through or you withdraw early that some of them say you have to repay. That's what you would have paid, but it's almost like without seeing the agreement, right? I don't know. But so an agreement, like an agreement exists. Uh, and in fact, I think we had to. We had that agreement in the packet not too long ago. There was a copy of the contract in there. Just keep in mind too, the past. If you look at the past five years and longer at that site, they were continuing to pay that off of that sixty million dollars, even though I think we all know that the parking lot in the last five years became empty and emptier. <laughs> And they continue to pay it without filing an abatement. I, I understand what you're saying, Paul. It it, doesn't it's not our job to make the case that. for them if they didn't live up to their agreement. Right. I understand that. But I just wanted to point out some of the other issues. And then Tom said it can I think, Tom, were you here present when you talked about that, when you uh, negotiated that, TIFF? Sure. You ready for me? We're ready. <laughs> okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. So, uh, so the IBM TIFF. Um, and, and I think to maybe go straight to um, Matthew's question. So for the TIF, it, it's, a, it's a pretty straightforward uh, calculation. So they saved 25% in taxes in 2010, 20% in 11, 15% in 12, 10% in 13, and then it's a 5% savings from 2014 through 2029. I'm sorry, Tom. They, is, is is that off? Is that off the total tax bill? It's just a straight 25 percent. In 2010, they just got a 25 percent reduction in their commercial taxes. Or was well, it, so they had to meet. Yeah. So right. Okay. They had to meet. Okay. okay. So they had to perform essentially three tasks. Those tasks were first to spend. Um, let me just find it. Hold on one second. Uh, okay, so they had to create 42 permanent full-time jobs that weren't in existence prior to the TIF. They had to invest 43 million in capital improvements to the site and 20 million in capital equipment to be stored on the site. So I believe that they did satisfy those three requirements. In my opinion, the way the, the TIF is drafted, you know, it, it isn't that they, once they reached those three milestones, they satisfied their part of the bargain and we were then obliged to offer the, um, the exemptions that we offered for, for the 20 years. So if we were to argue it, I think we would argue that the 42 jobs that they were providing went away prior to the end of the lease term. So we could go to, um, we could go to the state and ask that they decertify um, IBM as a participant in the TIF, and we would be entitled to some form of clawback um, if they decertify. The state is, is really not fond of decertifying in these situations, and the way the TIF is drafted it was really kind of a straight line. If you do these things, we will offer you these savings with the understanding that um, because they were adding so much value in capital equipment and improvements, we were going to make it back on the other side and in, in increased uh, tax revenue. So my understanding is that as they are leaving, the new owner is not looking 
to um, to use the TIF to their advantage. Uh, so we don't have to worry about those years going out. Well, well, the fact that they're not interested in a state or a state as such is one thing. What are they legally entitled to is the other thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so IBM can transfer the TIF. The TIF is transferable. And it would be 5% for what term? 5% each year through 2029. Okay. And the current valuation is roughly $60 million. Today. Today. Okay. Tom, um, I don't know if Anthony's already asked you to do this or Chuck, but I mean, the question comes up enough in the, uh, the townspeople. I, I would appreciate, as I guess I throw this out at the board, if Tom would give us a memo that speaks to this in writing rather than hearing anecdotally, well, we think they've satisfied things and, you know, whatever, all, you know, including the. And I would ask, you know, that we, we come up with the number that um, doesn't sound like it should be too hard to, to come up with as far as what they actually have benefited from, you know, the dollar amount. I, I think it's yeah, important. So I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's right. I think it's important to memorialize it in writing. Yep. I mean, we're having this conversation now, but it could come up again five years from now, ten years from now. And unless we have it um, in writing, it's hard to look back and recall what transpired at this time, so. Okay, so I, I sent you a letter on June 14th, and I can take that letter and update it, talking with Kathy about um, uh, just just confirming the value going back to probably 2011, 2010. Well, uh, and, and, and if I can if, update the memo to yeah. give you the, the, the assurances that you're looking for. Yeah, and the stuff about the transferability, I don't think that's referenced in your letter or your understanding of what the state's disposition is towards... Uh, you know, a town objecting to the performance on it, the, the, any of those issues that we've just talked about that aren't in the memo, I'd appreciate if you could include that. You got it. Yeah. And then maybe reference Kathy's right. memo, update to us, and tie it all together, I think would be helpful. Have it all in one spot. Happy to do it. Thank you. There was no language, Tom, that you're aware of that the first bucket that they, with 42 full-time employees, if they, there was no, it wasn't to perpetuity, was there any timeline on how long those 42 employees? I mean, so I'm, it's I'm, a, that's a tricky one, Chuck. So I know that, you know, kind of based on um, state regulations, those jobs need to be permanent Time. So, kind of using the basic definition of permanent, they should have lasted. Um, but I do think there are instances where things can change and the state accepts that things can change. Sure. Uh, another question that comes to mind, Tom, is because we keep saying IBM, you even keep saying IBM, is that who the agreement's with, even though they're not the property owner? And how does that, you know, distinction matter or not? Or does it matter? It, it it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a REIT that owns it now. I don't think IBM ever owned it. Right? Yeah, the, t the TIF was with IBM and AG slash ND King LLC. So I think it was the property owner, the, the, the um, tenant, and the town. So we're looking for Tom to give us kind of Reader's Digest version of... Yeah, all the, all the various topics in there. You know, and, I, and I wonder, just thinking something you said a moment ago, Tom, about, uh, you know, it's transferable, but is it transferable if the 40 jobs that they created are no longer there as part of it or not? So I, I would argue that if what's being transferred is not the same as what was agreed upon initially that, that we would have good cause to go to the state and say either this needs to be amended or it needs to be decertified. Right, because it's not a case of somebody selling the same operation to a new owner and they're continuing the same function there. Right. 
right. okay. which I think is what was anticipated in this in that language of transfer. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't become an issue, but it'd be nice to be well armed if it does. That makes it a little confusing too. It's not the same owner that he started off with. Right. Yeah, it's already transferred a couple of times, and so I guess that point's already been established. But the use has never changed. Hmm. Right, because the you know what they needed to provide was all on on IBM the the um, and or or whatever deal IBM made with the landlord in doing the improvements. Right. Thank you for putting this on, or whoever, Anthony. Um, do you know what the, so it's 5% of 27 assessment. times 60. It's $84,000 a year. I did the math. That's. The reduction is $84,000. 5% is 84%. 5% of the bill, yeah. That's all right. So 84% comes off the assessed value. Which is right. so it's, it's, not off the, it's not off the entire assessed value because it's off the improvement of. Okay. So there's a base value that is subject to full taxes, and then there's a portion CFP. that is subject to the TIF. So it's not like the five million off to sixty percent okay. off to sixty million. Okay. Um, so I think the base value has fluctuated because it's the base value plus any increase that we have um, is applied to it. So it's roughly around thirty million tends to be the base value. And so the 5%, the 25, 10, 15, and whatnot comes off that additional 30 million, 30 plus million. Okay, so it is, it, the TIF is reduced based on the difference between the base value and, and the improvements, let's say, in a simplified manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, the, so, the so reduction that is? 42 grand-ish, yeah. something like that. Right, so the exemption is based upon, it's a reduction in the value of the existing improvements. Okay. So, you know, for f the next five years, six years until it runs out, no, eight years, it would be $300,000, $320,000-ish. So is there some value to <coughs> IBM to sell that? To, to are they able to do that, Tom? Are they able to, in, if they are able to reassign it, can they get something for that? There's value to that. So if it's- You mean between, to, between IBM and whoever buys the property? Correct, correct. I, su I suppose it can certainly be negotiated. It's like, it's like buying a, a cell tower lease, right? Right, Some value. but in this instance, my, my understanding that is that the buyer is not interested in using the TIF, so the TIF will disappear and we'll just, we'll assess the property and they'll pay taxes. To Paul's point, that's been stated, but is he legally able to? So we just- Oh, I see, okay, yeah, right. Okay. But, but again, even if he does want, if, even if he does decide to use it, I guess what I was trying to get to with all this conversation is like, well, how much money is it? Yeah. And if we're looking at the difference between an assessment of $60 million and 59 million, 500 or you know whatever five, whatever two and a half percent of that is because that's what it works out to that's that's not it's not going to break the bank i mean I, I guess i'm just saying that that's not the hill i'm going to die on right but we need to be armed with the we need to know what the, i really just wanted to know what the numbers were right so yeah, go ahead the difficult part comes in too that there's going to be a significant decrease in the assessed value next year I, from what I understand, the sale price is going to be 25 somewhat million. And I'm working with Patriot Properties to come with a reasonable assessment. And I'm just beginning stages talking to Anthony how we want to deal with the proposed buyer. Um, one could say that if I dropped to 25 billion, where does that improved in this TIF go, anyways? So th there's so many multiple levels to this discussion that we're not even. It, just say I dropped it to 25, where is the improvement? What gets TIFFed? You know what, we probably, the more I think about it as we get into this, so this may factor into the negotiations we have down the road. We probably should be doing some of this discussion in the executive session mm -hmm. and down the road if we're going to revisit the subject again. Yeah, I agree with you. So, so you're saying if we go down to $25 million because that's below what the base, is, base value is now, like how do we apply the TIF to that yeah. new value? Okay. Yeah. That that, makes sense. That's yeah. where, yeah, I was talking to Anthony saying where tough. I'm going with this in right. the future. It's going to take some working with our um, software. I, I work with Patriot. 
I have a contract with them to help with the commercial industrial, and I just started going back and forth with them this week, and you know, saying, hey, this is the scoop, what we have, what are we gonna do going forward? The proposed sale is significantly less than what we have. It's gonna affect the classification hearing and the shift. It's gonna affect what the tip would be if we kept it. There's just so many levels. I, you know, there's a lot to go in. And you know, he did suggest that Anthony, when um, he's sitting, you know, talk, make sure, you know, what did they, you know, think that the assessment's gonna drop. I, I doubt it's gonna drop all the way to 25 million. I don't know. I'm still just working with, like I said, with Patriot, just, just started this week. Okay. I mean, certainly the assessed value is going to change quite a bit over the next couple of years. Quite a bit. It's going it's down from 60 changes, million currently. And then yeah. if we get sewer, again, I mean, it's just going to go. We yeah, got a crazy. couple of potential negotiations down the road. We probably shouldn't be you know, getting into too much speculation on that Agreed. publicly. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. Bye, Tom. <laughs> Bye, Joe. Bye. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, anybody have an opportunity to take a look at the minutes? Yep. yep. Before the board does, just wanted to circulate this. The board had already approved um, not exercising the right of first refusal for. Wickham? Yeah, we just have this to sign the one. We just need to sign. Uh, on the minutes, I just noticed, uh, I, I, if it's been in there before, I didn't notice, and I appreciate it, the list of what's included as uh, att attachments, too, as part of the record. Uh, it, it's always assumed that that's part of what goes along with the minutes, but we hadn't previously been including that list, so I think that's uh, it's helpful, because then you can look at that and say, oh, you know, if you supplied a memo or whatever and you don't see it on the list, you can have an opportunity to say, hey, wait a minute, that should be in there, too, you know, whatever. So whoever's idea that was was a, it's a good one. I'm gonna give it to Sue. So you thank you, Sue. Town Council. Yeah. <laughs> oh, same Town thing. Council. Same thing. Yeah. Ready to go, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we um, ready for a motion? No other questions? Yes, please. Uh, move that the select board vote to approve the meeting minutes of August 9th and eleventh, twenty twenty one. Second. Motion has been made to approve the minutes. Second by Mr. Glavy. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. You must be looking for a motion to adjourn, Mr. Chair. I, I would welcome one. All right. So moved. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Nordhaus to, to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much, folks. Our next meeting is the 7th of September. Yep. Stay Tuesday. safe. Hydrate. Actually, our next meeting is this Wednesday, apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!